Box Turtle at Long Pond by William George, illustrated by Linda George. It is dawn at Long Pond. A white mist covers the water. Little warblers awaken and fly from the tall pine trees to the blueberry bushes below. They dart to the pond's edge and take long sips of water. Something moves by a rotting birch log. All the birds are still. The log itself seems to come alive. The frightened songbirds fly off to the treetops. A head with red eyes appears from within the crumbling tree. It is a box turtle. He has burrowed into the log to stay warm during the cold autumn night. The turtle slowly makes his way down to the pond. He carefully stretches out his neck to drink. Fox turtles cannot swim. The turtle crawls to a favorite spot where wild grapes grow. He spends half the morning looking for fallen grapes, but finds only three. There is a rustling in the leaves. The box turtle looks around and sees a chipmunk with a big grape in its mouth. The sun is high overhead. The morning chill is gone. The turtle looks for a rock out in the open fields and bask in the hot sun. He closes his eyes and he is still aware of the sounds around him. Gray clouds move in. A breeze turns over the leaves on the maple trees. The box turtle opens his eyes. He senses rain and heads uphill. The turtle finds shelter under an old apple tree. It rains most of the afternoon. The rain stops and the sun comes out. The heavy rains have driven the worms out of their holes in the ground. Some have crawled onto a large flat rock. As quickly as he can, the box turtle bites the heads off each squirming worm. Then he goes back to eat them, one by one. A young raccoon walks up to the stone. She is also looking for worms. The box turtle sees her and quickly draws himself up into his shell. The raccoon turns him over. Can you imagine if you were that turtle? But cannot pry the shell open with her little fingers. She eats the worms and wanders off. The box turtle listens and waits. Hearing nothing, he opens his eyes and then sticks out his head. The raccoon is gone, turns himself over. The worms are gone too. The sun is dropping in the sky. The air is getting cooler. The turtle is still hungry and crawls toward the grapevines. Suddenly, he stops. A grasshopper is perched on a blade of grass. The turtle opens his jaws and lungs, but the grasshopper jumps away. When he reaches the vines, the box turtle hears a thrashing sound. A grouse is hitting the grapes with its wings. The fruit is falling everywhere. Another grouse is feeding on the ground. He is frightened by the turtle and flies away. The box turtle eats grapes until he's full.
The sun sets on the far side of Long Pond. The evening air grows colder. The box turtle burrows in the soft pine needles to stay warm and closes his eyes. It has been a long day. So boys and girls, I want you to think, would this book be a fiction book or a non-fiction book? Could it really have happened? Yes, it could. If it had been a make-believe story, which is called fiction, then maybe the turtle would have talked. But this is a um, non-fiction book because it's not make-believe and it gives us some factual information about box turtles. So I hope you enjoyed Box Turtle at Long Pond. Bye!